Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the Ultra Act Ultraman Noah, a Bandai Premium Web Shop exclusive. This final form of Nexus is looked at by many collectors as being unique for his design and many are now looking to pick him up. However, many retailers are now selling what little supply they have for quite the penny, reaching as high as $70. At the price tag, you'll want the most bang for your buck. So let's take a look and see whether or not he's worth adding into your collection. In the looks department, Noah is certainly eye-catching, especially for his bright silver paint. Because of how silver he is, there's little room for issues with the paint, which is a good thing because quality control issues are then kept to a minimum. He and Dark Zagi share almost entirely the same sculpt, with minimal differences, but overall it's clear that Noah shows off the details in the sculpt much better. Looking at the head, you can see the eyes use translucent parts to really capture that trademark ultra look. The torso looks pretty great, and the red plastic on the chest really stands out against the silver paint. The arms look fantastic with some great detailing, and you can see the little white lines here which are found throughout the body, and they look fantastic. Here's a closer look at the back where you can clearly see all of the small details to be found there. And finally, the legs which look nice and crisp even down to the shins here. Overall, Noah is a solid looking figure, and it's hard to find something to complain about with this release. Noah's articulation is pretty much what you would expect from the Ultra Act line, with pretty much little to no hindrances at all due to the sculpt. So to begin, the head is attached to the neck on what I believe to be just a hinge, because as you can see here, the head can definitely look up and it can sort of look down by itself, but without moving the neck, you can't really turn the head from side to side because just like Dark Zagi, there is an awesome ball joint in the neck at the base here, which allows you to move Noah's head in any direction you want. And with that hinge joint where the head is attached to the neck, you're gonna be able to get Noah to look in any direction, which is awesome. Moving down to the arms, the shoulders are attached into the body on a ball joint, so you can get all the twisting and turning you would normally expect out of an Ultra Act, as you can see here. And coupled with that, the actual shoulder has a hinge in it, and unfortunately the shoulder pad will block that hinge just a little bit, but if you pull the ball joint down, you'll be able to get the arms to go out a little straight, or if you really need to get the arm up, you can just spin it around. Now speaking of the shoulder pad, it is actually articulated. They do have ball joints. They are attached to ball joints, like so. And as you can see here, there is a bicep swivel, which very much like Dark Zagi is actually at an angle instead of being straight, which it's not necessarily an issue, it's just an observation. The shoulders feature the double hinge, which is a classic staple of the Ultra Act line, as you can see here, fantastic articulation. And then the wrists, they are double swivel or a ball hinge, as some like to refer to it. So you're gonna be able to get a lot of movement there, but unfortunately the forearm extends a little bit more over the actual wrist joint. So if you want to spin the hands around, unfortunately they're going to collide with the forearm and that will block the articulation. But luckily, the hands are attached onto the wrist on a ball joint, so you can spin them around and get just a little bit more articulation out of them if you need it. Moving to Noah's back, these wings, they are attached on hinges. And they go in about that far. And you want to be careful because, for me, they're relatively sturdy, but I've heard of this guy taking a shelf dive and snap. So just be careful when moving them. Treat them just like the Monster Arts King Ghidorah's wings. Moving down to the main body of Noah here, you'll see that there is an ab crunch up here, which unfortunately is sort of restricted. He can't really bend forward with this joint, nor can he really go backwards too, too well. But luckily, like Dark Zoggy, there is a waist joint, which is awesome, and you're going to be able to get tons of movement out of there. But overall, between these two joints, you're going to be able to put Noah in pretty much any pose you would like. Moving down to the legs in the hip area here, there are two hinges, which allow you to pull the legs up and down like so. And then from there, there are posts which turn into ball joints here, which are attached into the thigh. And you can spin the leg around in pretty much any way you want. And with the pull down, you can get Noah to do the splits, like so. And the socket in the thigh is actually a swivel joint, which allows you to swivel the thighs around just like so. 
And like I made mention in my Dark Zoggy review, I do have that same issue where the swivel will go out of alignment and it will sort of screw up the way that the legs on Noah will be positioned, which is a bit disappointing. Now, moving down to the rest of the legs here, we have the classic double hinge joint for the knee, which there's no real restriction there. And then the ankles feature the same sort of joint, which is found in the wrist, which is a double swivel ball hinge. And you get a lots of movement there. You can move the ankle forward and back. And luckily, the ankle joint plugs into the feet on a peg, so you can get the ankle rocker movement there. The foot swivels around wonderfully, as you can see. And finally, the toe. It is on a hinge joint, so you're going to be able to get a little bit of movement, though it's more so meant to be moved down instead of up, because there's really no cut in the sculpt there to accommodate for the toe going up. So as you're clearly able to tell, if you need to position this bright silver ultra in any pose, you're going to be able to do it just fine. Noah only comes with a few accessories, but the ones he does come with are pretty awesome. First up, on Noah's back, there is this little piece of plastic you can pick at, and you can remove, like so, and you get this replacement piece of plastic here, and this is meant to be plugged into Noah's back, like so, and the reason for this is it's for a Tamashi stage support of some kind, so this way if you want to support Noah with a stage, you're more than capable of doing so if you have a few laying around. Aside from the default fists, you get two other sets of hands with Noah. You get these chopping hands here, and you get these slightly splayed out hands here, and swapping them out is really easy to do. All you have to do is just grab the hand that is currently attached, pop it off, and take the replacement hand, and just pop it back on, like so. But just be careful not to be too forceful, and to get a nice grip on Noah, so this way you're not going to accidentally break anything. Next up, Noah comes with these funky shoulder pads with energy coming out of them. Now, I don't exactly know what these are called. I don't ever remember seeing these before, and I'm looking around online and I can't find a name for them, so I'll call them energy shoulder pads for all intents and purposes. And they're basically the shoulder pads which are already attached to Noah, but they have this translucent yellow plastic attached to them. And swapping them out, it's worrisome. Like I said before, these shoulder pads are actually on ball joints, so you can pop them off, like so, and as you can see, the ball joint is very, very small, and reattaching just the shoulder pad is very easy to do, but attaching this big thing is rather difficult. So you have to grip the arm, and you got to position your finger so this way it prevents the ball joint from going down at the shoulder. And then you have to make sure and hope and praying that you're lining up that tiny ball joint with the tiny hole perfectly. And yeah, it's just a nightmare for me. It's very, very difficult for me to attach. And I'm very, very afraid that I'm going to accidentally snap something that I really shouldn't. But anyway, I am just struggling with this and I'm trying to do it off camera and it's not really working. So for safety reasons, I'm just not even going to attempt it. I'm probably never going to use them, but... Anyway, that is how you attach them. You just got to work them onto the ball joint that's there, and you'll hear a snap. Hopefully, it'll be a nice snap, and that'll be the sound of this special shoulder pad popping into place on the shoulder. And finally, the last accessory, which comes with Ultraman Noah, the Lightning Noah. And it is a nice translucent yellow, which features just a little bit of paint application here and there. And as you can see, the actual burst portion here is attached to one of the chopping hands. It comes sculpted in, so no need to worry about swapping out parts to actually create this effect. But attaching it onto Ultraman Noah is really simple. It's just like swapping out a hand. So once you have your hand pulled off, all you have to do is line up the hand, which is attached to the effect part, and just slide it on like so. Pop it on like you would a normal hand, and there you go. Now Noah is firing off his lightning Noah. And if you have dark Zoggy, then you actually have an effect part which is compatible with both releases. 
So as you can see, Ultraman Noah pretty much comes with the essentials for an Ultraman Noah action figure. Unfortunately, one of the effect parts I feel is useless because of that very small ball joint and all of the fragile parts on Noah and the fact it's a web exclusive that really doesn't help it because if you break it it's not easy to get a replacement and the hand selection is pretty solid and the lightning Noah it looks pretty awesome and if you have dark Zagi then there's synergy with other releases and yeah it's awesome so when it comes down to the effect parts Noah comes with just the right stuff Noah is pretty much the same size as the other Ultra X in your collection, though those wings definitely add to the overall height. First up, here's Noah alongside NECA's Godzilla offerings. Continuing on with the size comparison, here is Noah alongside some of NECA's Pacific Rim figures. Here's Noah alongside some SH Monster Arts. Here's Noah alongside some fellow Ultra X, but this time, Kaiju. And finally, Ultraman Noah alongside all of those other Ultra Act Ultras. So as you can see, not only does this fit in well with other Ultra Act figures, but it's a nice 6-inch representation of the character. If you don't like the vinyl that's released from Bandai Japan, or any of the other figures which may be on the market, this may be one 6-inch representation you would want to hunt down. So, buy it now, skip it, or wait for a deal. Noah looks amazing, and the paint is applied wonderfully. Articulation is as solid as can be, and Noah can be posed in a variety of ways. Overall, Noah is an amazing figure, and his unique look just adds to the value. Fans should not hesitate to pick up this release.